I love watercolor because I love the many ways it can look. It can look very almost sloppy, very um, puddly. It can also be incredibly controlled. I love the fluidity of it, the, the, the drying capacity of it. Um, I love granulating colors, so I love the textural quality of watercolor paint. It has a mind of its own. <laughs> you never know quite what's going to happen. Uh, you can plan it very carefully and uh, still get surprises, and these surprises make it really fun. Working with it is what's so fun because it's like a collaboration. We're talking about the fact that I think most of watercolor artists are control freaks. <laughs> they, because it's a medium you can't control too easily, and so they learn and, dis and work really hard at doing it, and, uh, and they do do it. I like its immediacy, I like its transparency. Um, I frankly now know almost what it's going to do, but to me it's the delight of watching things happen on the paper. If I wanted to do some modeling, you can lift your brush. Okay. It would have been wet, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to come down this way, see, I, I can't keep it right on that edge. Potomac Valley Watercolors is uh, an organization that incorporates members who are juried in. It's very difficult to be juried in. You have to send three paintings in once a year, we jury. But kind of lost some of the white that you were going to keep in there. I know. In the Washington area at different shows, one came across uh, people whose paintings were being shown and they were always said, these, I'm a member of the Potomac Valley watercolorist. So it had a little, it had an aura of somebody who's an accomplished painter. PVW was sort of this, uh, brightly shining star. <laughs> it was way off in the distance when I first started taking watercolor classes with Jane Samanis and um, thought, wow, maybe someday, maybe someday I'll be good enough. I was a student of Carolyn's and she surprised me by saying that she was going to form this watercolor group and would I be interested in it? And of course I jumped at the chance. All the other art groups were not at all professional. A lot of them wanted to just be an art group so they could sell paintings, and that wasn't my idea. <laughs> I thought we really wanted a good professional group with, where we could exchange ideas and learn from each other. Okay, I went and changed pigments, now I'm gonna change again. That people can find technique advice and tips on how to be a better painter. It's a marvelous group of like-minded people who are very expert in what they do and um, they inspire and it's a challenge to try to stay with members of the group and as you see them improve and create beautiful work you're inspired to, and challenged to do the same. I was so impressed with the friendliness of the artists here and it's such a supportive group. And what is so exciting is that they have so much to teach me. I'm on a huge learning curve and it's like a roller coaster, but all of the artists and the lovely people I've met here have, have just been just a wonderful experience that I'm very, very grateful for. PVW is like the most welcoming, warmest, non-competitive, encouraging group of people that I have run across and I am in several other artistic groups. Once you begin painting or drawing, you begin to see things which you 
you mm-hmm. looked at them before, but you never saw them. Mm-hmm. For example, you know, I always thought trees were green, but now I know they're not. I mean, there is green in it, but they have all kinds of colors. That's one of the very satisfying things, of, at least for me, for doing watercolor. Max is exactly right. Until you until you get into this and and uh, and practice observing the world around you, um, you're, you're you're missing you know ninety percent of, of of the opportunity of life on Earth. There's a famous maybe apocryphal story about Winslow Homer. He was painting one time, plein air painting, and a gentleman came up from behind and watched him for a while, and then said to him, "Excuse me, uh, I don't see any of those colors." out there, and Homer turned around and said, don't you wish you did? <laughs> yes. I thought that I was just beginning to learn watercolor so I could paint some nice pictures for my house, because I liked what watercolor looked like, and I didn't want to pay the prices. But the process of creating really became so important to me that I was willing to sacrifice other things in my life to focus on it. It's part of who I am. One thing I'm hoping that this group does is to wage a battle to reinstall watercolor in its rightful place in the hierarchy of art. You know, the days when uh, colors were fugitive and they faded. Uh, the days when uh, f- uh, framing costs and so on, or, you know, had to be glass, or we've got plexi now, it's different, technology is different. You know, today uh, companies are testing watercolor paints to 100 years for durability. And I think it's really important for the consumer and the collector to know that watercolors do survive for many generations and are indeed an object of desire and collectability for museums, galleries, and the home. Watercolor in the old days was considered a medium for sketches. It's more than that. I think it's attending shows of quality work um, like PBW's shows or Virginia Watercolor Society shows and so forth, where one sees uh, a proficiency as well as a, a range of both subject matter and styles um, that you realize you can't pigeonhole watercolor. You shouldn't pigeonhole watercolor. People are willing to risk things, which you must do to, to progress in watercolor and to come up with stunning pieces. You must risk it all. Sometimes they would ask me how, how long have I been painting and I would, you know, say years, most of my life. And I still haven't learned everything I oh, want to yeah. know. And uh, I still don't paint anywhere as near as well as I'd like to. You never really stop. <laughs> this is always some other direction you can go off and, and discover. It's a group of people who are willing to take risks and live with the live with the results, and then regroup and start again. We always encourage our yeah, members to keep growing and learning. So, I'm, so. I'm just so pleased that you started it. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I did too. It went beyond my dreams. I mean, I never thought. Potomac Valley would become the group that it is.